What's up you scruffy looking nerf herders? This is the Awesome Nerd Show and we, I just got done seeing Solo a Star Wars story. So of course the brand new Star Wars series. Continuing on with the in-between stories that you know that don't go with the episodes. So we got the new stories with this time being the Han Solo one. And so I got done seeing it. So this review is going to be probably a little short because it's just me today. And I'm going to say there's just going to be spoilers. Like we're not going to do spoiler free and not. But um, I guess the big question is, is the movie good? Well, to answer that question, you're asking the wrong person because I love Star Wars. I love everything about Star Wars. I've never found anything I really hate. Like, I don't like some stuff as much as others. So, this movie, I really enjoyed. Is it the best movie ever? No, not by a long shot, especially not the best Star Wars movie. But it is, it's pretty decent. Um, I don't like some of the story stuff they did. Um, like, some of the little changes and twists that I'll get into here in a second. Um, that they did to like fit the story or just to make it a little more interesting and of course going into this movie as a usual Star Wars fan you imagine what something's going to be like and from the trailer and from my knowledge of past stuff that's been written in books and everything um, you kind of piece together what I thought the movie would be which it had a lot of those parts but not as detailed as I wanted and didn't show as much stuff as I wanted um, so go ahead and get into it so or first off before I get move into it so should you see it um yeah, probably. I mean, if you like Star Wars, definitely go see it. I don't see why not. And um, should you see it right away? Maybe not. There is one thing that could be a, like a big spoiler, which I'll be getting into later. Um, but otherwise, you know the story of Han Solo because if you've seen, you know, uh, the uh, original trilogy, you know kind of what has led up into that. So there's nothing really spoilers that's going to happen. But there is one part that's a different twist off that could be a spoiler. So that's the only thing you may have to worry about is the spoiler part. Um, but that's... Uh, pretty much it for like it's hard to tell like I I to me it's on par with Rogue One See I liked Rogue One especially parts of it, but there were some parts I just can't stand it was slow and boring That's the same with this movie. There were a lot of good parts. That I really enjoyed then There's a lot of slow boring parts. that I don't like so you'll just have to you'll have to decide like I keep seeing critiques online You know, this is a waste of time. Don't don't waste your money on this movie And I was like, oh, it's not bad It's not the best Star Wars movie, but it's not the worst either and I would agree with that like it's not the best um, it's I don't really know which one is the worst because um, even the one that's worst I still enjoy so it's hard to, de um, to decide with that but go ahead and get into spoilers now so first off I did not like what they did with Han Solo as in his name where he's like my name's Han just Han and he's like well, what, who are you with? And he's like, I'm by myself. And he's like, oh, so Solo, Han Solo. See, I did not like that. I just wanted Han Solo to be his name. That's it. Just like, not like to be, my name's Han and then I'm all by myself, so I'm Solo. That I hated. Um, I wish we got to see more of Corellia, like his pl home plan. I did like that we get to see, you know, the like shipyards where they're building the Star Destroy and stuff. I really enjoyed that. But I wanted to see more of like his planet and some stuff going on there. And it, I wanted to see it more of him in the Empire because obviously he escaped from there, joins the Empire and that's like how he gets to become what he is you know he's a pilot there and everything and you heard some of that you didn't get to see it so I wish we could have saw some of his like going into boot camp or something in the Empire or whatever doing that then of course we get transported into the planet the, uh, they didn't label hardly any planets but the mud planet where we had the mud troopers and you got to see a little bit of fighting, but you never saw who they were exactly fighting. You just, you know, got to see explosions and mud and everything. Then you got to see some um, ATST walkers, and that was about all you got to see. And then, you know, he takes off with the group of Woody Harrelson and whatever their little group is. Then that leads into the train part. Um, oh, and he also comes across Chewbacca, which I did like imagine you know because Chewbacca was in a cage all trapped up and or chained up and everything and they threw Han in there to you know for Chewbacca to kill and whatever just to feed him and that I kind of get but I was picturing you know because the Wookiees were um in prison which it mentions that in the movie that they were in prison and that after Kashyyyk and everything and so I was expecting them to find whatever planet that all the Wookiees that were imprisoned are so just seeing you know, a whole bunch of Wookiees and Han Solo coming in and doing whatever to help them escape and then because of that that makes Chewie owe Han a life debt so that sticks Chewie going on with him and leaves his family to continue on since his family's now free and all that sort of stuff or his you know civilization is free so he leaves going with Han to help Han and repay the life debt and all that and that's how I wish they would have got partnered together but just they were 
Chewbacca was like this monster they would throw you know people to and stuff that I didn't really enjoy that much but I still like getting to see Chewbacca because he's one of my top favorite characters in the movies so I like to get to see him um, so then we get um, him, uh, Han teamed, and Chewbacca teamed up with Woody Harrelson's group and we see the Infus Ness group come in and try to stop him from smuggling or attacking the train, which we got to see some new troopers, those train troopers, and then we got to see another one um, that was on Corellia, and I like the way they looked, the troopers and everything, the stormtroopers. And another part of the movies I didn't really like that we got introduced to next was um, we had Han Solo, or Han's lady friend, um, Kara, I think is is what they the name was, but she gets reintroduced because he left. Um, she they got separated on Corellia, and then now they're back together, and she's working for the big bad guy, which is Paul Bettany's character. And um, I didn't, I just don't like that he has a relationship. I know if you've read the comics, there's stories where he, you know, had this past wife and stuff, but I, it, which is not her by the way. But I just like you know him kind of being like a ladies' man type thing, and not being tied down to one woman, which you find out you know in the end that he's not and everything, uh, because she leaves without him because she's a part of this new group that I want to get into. Um, so I didn't like that they include that on the thing in there. Um, then we got Lando, which I did like the whole Lando stuff and the whole you know playing the um, Sabbath game or sub. Sabaka, Sub Sabak, I don't remember how they said it exactly, game, and Han losing because Lando had a fake, you know, a card thing up his sleeve, or he had a trick of his sleeve um, to win the game, so he ends up winning, but they end up take, uh, taking Han, or Lando's ship, the Millennium Falcon, and Han and their group and stuff to go to the Spice Mines of Kessel to, to steal these, whatever the part their stuff is, I don't even remember what they called it in the movie which I did not like that that's whatever this stuff was this um, stuff for like hyperdrives or something like that um, they're like liquid for it that I did not like that that was like the whole motivation behind the movie because this is like a heist movie obviously so they're stealing all that stuff um, but we got introduced to Lando and they helped and of course he has his robot that he has a relationship with that he ends up losing in um, the spice mines and but they end up connecting her into the ship so now she's like a part of the ship so now the Millennium Falcon's even better um, and then they escape through the Kessel Run, and that's how they do it under the 12 parsecs. And I like how Han even said, hey, if you round down, it's 12. So it's like, you know, what was the real time? Because Chewbacca was, you know, roaring and stuff. And Han's like, well, if you round down. And so it'd be interesting to know what the correct time, even though it's all made up. So it doesn't matter. But you, they got introduced to the whole monster and thing that's, you know, between them and the escape and everything and I'm like that I did not care about at all the whole monster and it just got sucked up into a thing and so it was I did not like that and then they land on this planet at the very end again they didn't use I believe in Rogue One every time they went to a new planet a little like name popped up like saying what the planet name was this time they didn't do it so the only time you heard of planet was like Corellia because they mentioned it and Kessel and stuff they mentioned all the names and everything um, but then they get back and it's a whole bunch of twisted turns of like no I'm against you I'm with you and all this stuff between um, huh, of course Han and uh, his girlfriend or his girlfriend wife whatever or not wife but girl whatever you want to call her um, the Paul Bettany character and Woody Harrelson's character they all just like you know twist and turns well I have this liquid no I have the liquid and it, no that's a fake and then the Infus Ness turns out to be a girl and that she's good and I did like that in her group so we got a bunch of different like characters of Rodian and all sorts of different groups that they're all working together trying to fight this um, this uh, Crimson Dawn group um, that we see some more of um, but you got to see different characters, like I said, and there was a character that looked exactly like the one of the characters from Rogue One that was a part of the, like, I don't even know what they called, but Saul Guerrero's group. It was one of the alien-looking characters. We got to see a character that looked just like that, so it could be the same person, maybe different, we don't know. Um, then we got to see Warwick Davis finally not in, like, a character. For, well, I guess he was in Episode 1, at least not as a character. He was himself, and he was in himself as a character in this movie, and I like that, you know, not him hiding under some sort of costume or playing a CG character or something like that. It was actually him, so I really enjoyed getting to see him in the movie. Um, but it's just a whole movie of twists and turns of stuff, and it's like, is, is this really you know pointless at all? But the big spoiler part that's at the like towards the very end is that the whole Red Dawn thing. So his girlfriend is you know the second in command type person to Paul Bettany's character, which is like one of the top leaders of this group. Well, they end up turning and you know on him and fighting and killing him. Well, then she takes his ring because he has a ring that has their logo and stuff, and she's able to put in a thing and it calls up you know a little uh, hologram and it looks kind of like you know like a, the emperor or something like that, some sort of figure. 
And at this moment, like just all these parts just connected for me. I was like, his voice sounds somewhat familiar. And then I saw his legs, he had robotic legs. And then the Crimson Dawn, and so I immediately thought Red, and I'm like, who's Red? Has robotic legs and has that voice. I'm like, Darth Maul. And then it turns around and he takes his hood off and it is Darth Maul. And so we have Darth Maul back in the movie. Because of course if you've seen um, the Clone Wars and Rebels and stuff, he has been reintroduced. So he is still alive. He got uh, metal legs put on and so he's still, you know, around and moving and everything. And he had his double lightsaber. It was a different one. Add some weird like you know like uh kind of like sword looking type thing that's curved off the front of it and it looked really cool so he's brought back and she's you know leaving to go rejoin him and stuff so i want to see a movie with that get in darth maul reintroduced back in movie form and i like he looked like ray park i believe is his name that you know played him originally just in his older age now and stuff so i really hope that was him i haven't looked at credits or anything um, so I'm really excited to see that. So that's the big spoiler part that if you have not seen the movie, that's, you know, what could be spoiled for you if you didn't know. But if you're watching this, you already know that. And then that leads to the end of our movie where then we get Han Solo going back to this other planet. Again, no name planet. And he comes across Han Solo once again. And Han's like, oh, you made it. You're alive and stuff because Han took off with the Millennium Falcon. That's all now destroyed and tore up and missing the escape pod out of the front. So that's why the ship looked different. So it now looks like the normal Millennium Falcon. And it's all tore up. So that's how it gets looking, how it does when Han has it but he's so he took off in that and so they refine him and Han's like I want my ship and as he's meeting stuff he sees you know that Han has the thing up his sleeve the little machine that put holds cards up his sleeve and so he you know is like gonna call him out but he doesn't and then they hug and he's like I want to play you again for the game and stuff and so they're playing again they're all putting all their money in and stuff um, and he's like I want your ship and that stuff again and so they end up laying out it's coming down to them too and Han uh, is like laying his cards, Lando's laying his, and Lando goes to reach for his cards, and there's no cards in his sleeve, and so he just lays his cards, and of course then Han plays his and has the better cards, so he now owns the Millennium Falcon, so that got it into his possession, and then of course he has the little gold dice, which I actually have hanging right over here, we got from the BAM box, a replica thing, um, and he has those throughout the movie, he gives it to the uh, Kira at the very beginning and she hands them back when they meet later on and so he hangs them up in the Millennium Falcon like they did in the very first movie and stuff and so it all just comes full circle and then of course they're talking about because Woody Harrelson's character mentioned that there's this gangster on Tatooine that's putting a group together for a big mission and so at the very end he looks at Chewie and says how about we go check out this big mission thing or whatever on Tatooine. So that's leading up to him going to Jabba, which I was hoping the movie would end up with him getting the stuff from Jabba and whatever happening that went wrong. And then that leads you know, obviously into ep or episode four or whatever, um, Star Wars, the motion picture. Um, but that's just how, of course, I would want it to go with, you know, with my vision and everything. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, I really enjoyed parts of the movie. I liked the whole Kessel part. I liked the whole um, mud place. Even though it was real short and we didn't really get to see much, I liked the whole part on the train that they fought along. Krillia, like I said, left me wanting more. Like, I didn't get to see enough. And then, um, like I said, the Kessel mines, but like, the whole ship saying like it was disappointing because there is a like specific tunnel that you go in and out of which is called the Kessel Run and they were leaving and it had the Star Destroyer which you see in the commercial and everything and I was wanting more interaction there but they just took off in off the path and that's where they went and found the monster and everything so that was kind of disappointing we didn't, didn't get more at the Star Destroyer and everything and then I wish they would explain a little bit more between Chewie and Han and the life that it was never brought up or anything at all so I wish they would have brought that up because you know it's like it doesn't explain that part. Like Han saves Chewie at multiple points, but it's never brought up about the life dead or anything. So I wish they would have brought that up. But that's pretty much it. I don't know much else to talk about because like there's too many characters and they're you know brand new characters we don't know about. So I don't know any of the names and like I said, we don't know any of the planets. But um, it was just a fun, interesting movie. Like I said, it's a um, like a um, heist movie. So if you like that sort of stuff, you know, people making plans and trying to break into stuff and steal stuff, that whole thing. That's that kind of a movie. And I enjoyed it. It's, like I said, probably not my favorite Star Wars movie. I don't know how many times I'll rewatch this. It's like Rogue One. I like certain parts, but I'm not like clamoring to watch this movie over and over again um so that makes it a little lower on my list but it's still not terrible in my opinion i like it and i thought the characters and actors weren't bad han solo is you know at some points um he wasn't too bad other points it's like you know i'm sure they could have done better but he's not horrible by any means i really love donald glover's lando and chewbacca of course i just absolutely love 
But that's going to be it for my review of Solo, A Star Wars Story. I didn't think it was too bad. Let me know what you thought, though, in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to see more reviews. And we'll see you next time.